In the last video, we wrote the change making function. Let's go back to the main script and test it out. For the first test case, we'll set money to 82 cents since we already know what the answer is from the first video. Now we can call the function. The easiest way to do this is by copying and pasting the function definition since we don't need to change any of the variable names right now. Upon running the script, we see the expected results, so the function appears to be good. Now let's try another test case. Instead of specifying one static value for money, let's spice it up and test our function with a vector of random money values. Here we've used the built-in randi function. This function generates a 1 by 3 vector of random numbers between 1 and 99. There are other ways to use the randi function, which you can read in the documentation linked in the description. Note that I'm storing these randomly generated values in a variable called moneyvec to differentiate it from the first test case's money variable. I've also made a zero matrix called coins. Length of money vec turns out to be 3 since we are generating 3 random values of money. So the size of coins turns out to be 3 by 4. If we scroll down to the command window, we can see what coins holds currently. Each row of coins will store the 4 outputs of the change function, so we need to have 3 rows because we will generate 3 random function inputs. So num p for the first test case will go here, then num n for the first test case will go here, and so forth. This allows us to access individual values of num p through num q for any of the three test cases later if we need to do any post-processing. There's one complication when trying to call the function. We have three random money values to test, but our function only accepts one input at a time. We can circumvent this by constructing a for loop which iterates through money vec and calls the change function for a specific input. I've made some changes to the names of the output variables. In the first test case, the outputs were nump through numq. But since we've decided to store each of those outputs in one conglomerate matrix, we have to use indexing to place each output in its proper position. We use the variable i as our loop counter. We set the for loop to iterate three times, since length of money vec is three. We use money vec of i to grab just one element of money vec as our function input. Then, we store the corresponding nump in the first column of the ith row of the coins matrix, then numn in the second column of the ith row of the coins matrix, and so forth. We use i in the output variables to control what row we're on. In the first iteration, 
i equals 1, so we're populating the first row of the coins matrix with the nump, num n, and so on when we use the first element of moneyvec as our function input. We can see what's happening upon running the code. MoneyVec generated these three random variables, which are different from the last time when we ran the code, which makes sense because it's a random number generator. This for loop called the change function once at a time for each of the three MoneyVec elements. The results were printed to the command window, which we can easily verify with common sense. If we double click on the coins variable in the workspace, we can see the full matrix you'll see that each row corresponds to the command window output for each of the three randomly generated cases. You'll get a different money vec every time you run the code since the elements are randomly generated, so you can keep playing around with this if you want. That's all for this demo. The key points are to make a flowchart before you start programming, write a standalone function file and test it using a script file, and verify your results. One key point illustrated in the second test case is to test a variety of values one at a time using an external for loop. This is almost the exact procedure you'll have to do in your homework, so be sure to understand why we used a for loop in the driver script and how the code works. There are much more efficient ways to solve the change making problem by using some built in functions. For additional practice, rewrite this code using some built in functions of your choice. See you soon.